Enjoy the program today. To check out the book, go to the Nashville Public Library website. And for more information about the Book Dreamers, visit the Nashville Reads page. Thank you. Dreamers by Judy Morales. I dreamed of you, then you appeared. Together we became amor, love, amor, resplendent life, you and I. One day we bundled gifts in our backpack and crossed a bridge outstretched like the universe. And when we made it to the other side, thirsty, in awe, unable to go back, we became immigrants. Migrantes, you and I, the sky and the land welcomed us in words unlike those of our ancestors. There were so many things we didn't know, unable to understand and afraid to speak. We made lots of mistakes. You and I became caminantes. Thousands and thousands of steps we took around this land until the day we found a place we had never seen before. Suspicious, improbable, unbelievable, surprising, unimaginable. Where we didn't need to speak, we only needed to trust, and we did. Books became our language. Books became our home. Books became our lives. We learned to read, to speak, to write, and to make our voices heard. Someday, we will become something we haven't even yet imagined. But right now, we are stories. We are two languages. We are lucha. We are resilience. We are hope. We are dreamers, soñadores of the world. We are love, amor, love. Thanks for tuning in for our time with Jake. This week, my inspiration comes from this year's Nashville Reads book, Dreamers. Everyone is encouraged to participate by telling their story through a creative outlet, and one of them we provided was a paper butterfly that would be added to create an entire butterfly wall. I thought it would be fun to investigate the butterfly theme by making symmetrical prints similar to the Rorschach ink blobs. I've always loved the colors of monarch butterflies, and I also want to raise awareness of their decline in recent years, likely due to human-related factors. Select your favorite butterfly, and you can create your own template like I did by tracing it onto a sheet of sturdy paper like cardstock. If you turn up the brightness on your screen and dim the lights in the room, you should be able to see well enough to trace. Tape the paper into place, but trace lightly to avoid damaging your monitor. The materials I used are these nifty little squirt bottles, this pump spritzer, a palette or a surface to practice my paint beat upon, and paint with the fluid consistency of house paint, which is what I used. Now, most craft paints will have this viscosity, and you can put a squirt bottle tip on them. To begin, fold your sheet of paper down the middle of the butterfly. Start with applying the black paint. I also had a photo of a monarch butterfly I looked at to guide where I applied each color. You hardly need to squeeze the bottle, as gravity does most of the work. In fact, if you squeeze the bottle too much, a bubble might happen. Once the paint is laid down, 
I can use the tip of the bottle to spread it around as well. Every couple of minutes, I mist the paint with the spritz bottle, as the acrylic paint dries fairly fast in fine places like the antenna. When I mist, I'm sure to dampen and not drench. I do the orange upper wing first, and then in some attempts, I added yellow to the bottle of orange to incorporate more color mixing before working on the lower, more yellow part of the wing. I notice it feels more natural to go in certain directions with my wrist, so I rotate the paper accordingly. When I'm ready to fold, I make sure the paint covered side is on bottom, and I begin the fold with the clean side slightly curved so the part nearest to the fold gets pressure first, and then I work my way out toward the edges, making sure every area is pressed by hand. Once I peel it apart, I recommend touching up any missed places by hand, as I noticed if I applied paint and folded over a second time, the paper was more likely to tear. Furthermore, the best paint mixture happens upon the first fold, as subsequent folds tended to muddy the paint. We're continuing to work with the butterflies we made last time, and if you're like me, your print might have ran a bit beyond the edges, so I decided to cut mine out of the white paper and make it into one of these cool cards. You can freehand cut these with scissors, or you can create a stencil by using an X-Acto knife to carefully cut out one butterfly and then trace its shape over the print where the paint spread too much. If you use this method, be sure to get the stencil well aligned before tracing. You'll see that I use a combination of scissors and an X-Acto knife, as some of the tighter spaces are easier to reach with the precision of the X-Acto knife blade. The pencil line traced from the stencil might be faint in the video, but it's there as my guide. Now that the edges are defined, it's a good time to touch up with the same black paint I used before. Adding a little bit of paint to the antenna will strengthen that area. You might even consider putting some black paint on the back side of the antenna too. The black paint will lighten as it dries. To make the card insert, start by folding a sheet of paper of your choice. I recommend a color that contrasts your butterfly's color somehow. A lightweight computer paper is ideal for the insert as more cardstock would start to make the crease of the fold too noticeable. I'm never one to waste paper, so I align my butterfly to the top of the sheet so the leftover bottom piece can be used for another craft later. You only need to trace the butterfly onto one side, and then fold the paper in reverse of the original fold and use scissors to cut within the line you just traced. This way your insert will fit neatly inside and not show until the card is opened. The decision to include the header tail is up to you. When it comes to attaching the insert, I recommend using a glue stick as it's less likely than white glue to leave wrinkles in the paper and hot glue adds too much volume to the fold. I only apply the glue around the fold line on the printed butterfly and do so lightly as excessive glue can cause wrinkles. Now, there's a couple different ways to fold and press these to make them into cards. In the first method, I've folded the card while the glue stick is still wet and placed it inside of a book with the antenna and the head sticking out of the book. Be sure the insert is properly aligned before leaving it to dry. After waiting 20 minutes for the glue to dry, I noticed when I removed the butterfly from the book, the crease line was a bit prominent. So on my next attempt, after applying the glue, I laid the butterfly flat and pressed it that way. Once it dried, I folded it by hand, and that kept the crease from being as noticeable. Now I just need to find an envelope that's the right size, and I'm ready to send my butterfly into the world to someone special. After I've written down my message, of course. These butterflies are lightweight, so slap a first class postage stamp on the envelope, and it's ready to go. Where will your butterfly visit? Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed this Nashville Reads program. Now, we would like to hear from you. So that we can provide you with the most relevant, high quality programming, please take a minute to fill out the survey online or click on the survey available in the description box below. Thank you.